Uh, we have our last talk of the session from uh, Robert Geirhos uh, on a uh, similar topic, actually, uh, that uh, ImageNet trains uh, convolutional neural networks are biased towards texture, and increasing shape bias uh, improves accuracy and robustness. Take it away. Thanks. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very glad to be here today to talk about our work on uh, texture versus shape. The motivation behind our work was a very fundamental question, actually. It's a, um, the question, how do CNNs actually recognize objects? And sort of, if we look at different explanations, the standard textbook explanation tells us that, well, they detect object shapes, object parts. Uh, for example, in the first layer, they detect edges. Then they group together a bunch of edges to form a door. And once they've de uh, detected a shape like a door or a couple of windows, they can, again, group these uh, basic parts and, and shapes together to, uh, for example, the house here. So uh, CNNs recognize objects by detecting object shapes. This is sort of the standard uh, explanation. Now, this explanation is super intuitive. It seems to make sense to us as, as humans, but it's also deeply unsatisfying in a way. It's unsatisfying because it predicts that if the shape is missing in an image, that then a CNN should fail to recognize the image. And this is not what we uh, actually find in practice. So if you look at these images, they uh, more or less look garbage to us, but uh, CNNs will have no trouble identifying the uh, dog here, actually. This is just a texturized version of, of this dog image. And this is really something that's uh, sort of a challenge for the shape explanation of CNN object recognition. And this led us to think about a different explanation, actually. We thought, well, maybe the texture, the local statistics, uh, really low level, um, rather than the global object shape, um, could be responsible for, for CNNs recognizing objects. So this explanation is really the, the texture explanation of CNN object recognition. But um, sort of how do we find out what is texture or shape that's more important for a CNN to recognize objects? And to this end, we design an experiment. And now in normal standard images, for example, this cat here, it's kind of hard to tell whether a CNN is using shape or texture because both are present. The cat has a cat shape and a cat texture, so it's hard to tell which, which is the crucial feature that a CNN is using. So we decided to go the other way around, actually, and artificially create images that have the shape of one category and the texture of a different one. So for example, here uh, we can create this weird-looking cat with elephant texture with now the, the shape from one category, the texture of a different one. And uh, we use style transfer, actually the technique that's usually being used to transfer the style of a painting onto a photograph. We use uh, style transfer here to um, generate images like these. And, and we've generated thousands of these images, always the shape from one category, the texture of a different one. And then we can actually uh, look at classification decisions. Would a CNN now recognize this cat with elephant texture as a cat or as an elephant to tell us more about whether a CNN is using shape or texture. Now, um, so we've, we've generated thousands of these images. We've shown them to both CNNs and also human observers in the lab and, and recorded the classification decisions. And for humans, actually, if you plot here, now um, the responses, we see that it's uh, all on the shape side, actually. So this, this cat with elephant texture, if the response was cat, would be counted towards shape bias. If the response was texture, would be counted, uh, response was elephant would be counted towards uh, texture bias. And here humans actually have this uh, super strong shape bias. There's no uh, doubt about that. And now we looked at uh, ImageNet trained CNNs, for example, ResNet50 here. Um, and it's completely on the opposite uh, side of the spectrum. Uh, ResNet has a, a huge shape bias. And this is really a, a key difference between human and, and uh, CNN object recognition. Humans have the shape bias. And at least ResNet seems to have a huge texture bias here. And this is not something that's uh, specific to this particular network. We've tested lots and lots of other networks as well. For example, here, VDG, GoogleNet, AlexNet, they're all uh, in blue, uh, very much on the texture side. So to uh, conclude this uh, part of our work is we've seen that CNNs seem to be using textures much more than we actually thought. They seem to um, ignore uh, shapes much more than, than humans. Uh, they, they really have a strong texture bias. But um, something that we still don't know is, well, 
is there anything that we can do about this? Can we change the texture bias into a shape bias? And um, this is sort of the, the leading question for the next part of our experiments, which was really the idea, can we do anything about it? Can we do, induce a shape bias in CNNs? And uh, sort of our motivation behind the next step was to think about why would CNNs have a texture bias in the first place? Is it a bug or perhaps even a, a feature? And we thought, well, perhaps textures are just the easiest strategy possible to, to solve a task like ImageNet. Perhaps recognizing a cat by the cat fur is just way easier than detecting the object shape, which, which can also change depending on viewpoint and so on. Um, so perhaps texture is just the easiest strategy. Um, and, and that led us to uh, an experiment, actually, where we thought, OK, can we create a data set where we take the texture away so that the texture is no longer correlated with the class of uh, the data set? And um, to this end, we created Stylized ImageNet. It's basically a copy of original ImageNet. But uh, for every single image, we replace the original texture, which is, um, tells us something about the class. We replace it with an arbitrary texture from a random painting via style transfer, just to have a data set where the texture is no longer telling us anything about the class. And then we trained networks again on this uh, stylized image net, and, and then had a look at whether anything uh, changes in terms of uh, texture or shape biases. Now, this is still the plot from uh, before. We, we've seen this huge difference between uh, human shape bias and, and CNN texture bias. And now, the same network, ResNet50, trained on um, Stylized ImageNet in, instead of ImageNet does actually move uh, much closer towards human perception. We, we now see that these orange squares have moved from a texture bias towards a shape bias. And this really tells us that the same network architecture is able to have both a texture bias, as um, is the case when trained on ImageNet, and a shape bias when trained on this new data set where the texture is no longer sufficient to solve the task. Um, and this is sort of really what we can take away from here, that they, um, the texture bias isn't something very specific to CNN architectures. This is something that uh, is sort of a property of the training data set. And when we train on different data set, uh, we can actually induce a, a shape bias instead. And for the last part of our work, we thought, well, maybe let's have a look um, whether there are any benefits of, of having a shape bias. Uh, why, why do humans? perhaps have a, a shape bias, are there any, any cool aspects that come out of it? And uh, we've looked at a couple of uh, metrics, for example, uh, here. We always compare ResNet50, same architecture, once trained on ImageNet, once trained on Stylized ImageNet. Texture bias versus shape bias. And we, we can see that actually for ImageNet object recognition, we get slightly improved performance just by, by uh, including Stylized ImageNet in the training data. And also we get uh, quite a bit of a boost on uh, object detection data sets, such as Pascal Wok or MS Coco here. Just having a shape bias really seems to be helpful in terms of how uh, well the features transfer to object detection here. However, the most uh, interesting finding, at least from, from my perspective, was when we started asking ourselves the question, why would humans have a shape bias in the first place? Why are sh humans not just using the texture of objects to, to recognize them? Why are humans focusing on the shape of a cat to, to know that it's a cat? And while this is pure speculation, we, we thought, well, perhaps that's related to how easily a certain um, feature is distorted when there's noise. For example, when we look at um, noisy images, when, when some sort of noise is applied, and this could be really um, relevant for, for humans. You want to recognize animals out there uh, even though it's snowing. And, and when there's noise, actually, we can see that the local structure, the texture, is very much distorted and changed. However, the shape seems to be really um, intact during, um, during this um, adding of noise. So perhaps the, the reason why uh, humans have the shape bias in the first place is because uh, sh shape is just much more robust towards uh, distortions. And this is pure speculation, but we decided to, to give it a go and, and test it. Um, on networks, compare the original network against the one with a shape bias and see whether there's anything changing in terms of robustness towards distortions. And this uh, is what we did ne next. So uh, here we can see classification accuracy on the y-axis 
plotted as a function of how much noise we add, how severe the distortion is. Uh, in this example, it's, it's uniform noise added to an image. And ResNet50, actually, standard ImageNet training texture bias, we can see that there's um, a pretty sudden drop, actually, in, in accuracy. Uh, is this good? Is this bad? Well, uh, when, when comparing to uh, human data, actually, we, we've, shown the, we've shown the same images to human observers. We can see that, actually, it's pretty bad. Humans are far more robust. And now the interesting part is, well, where would uh, CNN with a shape bias actually be on this plot? And this is what we uh, can see here. Again, the orange squares. We see that actually Resonant 50 with a shape bias, same architecture, no other modifications, uh, same hyperparameters, simply different training data inducing a shape bias gives us better performance, uh, more robustness for, um, for this particular form of noise. And this is actually not something that's specific to uniform noise, to the example here. Uh, we've also tested a bunch of other distortions, and uh, we've actually discovered that just having a shape bias gives us improved performance on actually all of these um, distortion types depicted on this slide here. Even though um, the network had never seen fog before or uniform noise or glass or blur or any of these uh, distortion types. So really we get an immersion uh, sort of noise robustness um, without ever showing the network any of these particular noise types during training. So this really seems to be an emergent property of a shape bias. And this is um, sort of the um, quite, quite interesting finding because this was not something that um, the network was, was trained to do. It's really an emergent property. So to uh, sum up um, our, the, our work, we've, we've seen that by default, CNN seem to be using textures much more than shapes when trained on standard data sets. But this is not something that's um, impossible to change. Simply by changing the training data to the uh, stylized ImageNet version, we can induce a shape bias, and we get improved uh, features, and especially emergent no uh, noise robustness uh, for free when uh, training networks to have a shape bias. And with that, I'd like to uh, thank my amazing team from uh, Tubing. That's Patricia, Claudia, Matthias, Felix, and uh, Wilan, and all of you for your attention. Thanks. Thanks very much, Robert. It looks like we have uh, some questions. Uh, yeah. Um, so I'm very curious. Uh, is your uh, network uh, with the shape bias um, robust to adversarial per perturbations? That's an excellent uh, question, actually. So uh, here I've only shown this um, sort of natural uh, distortions. And we get improved performance across the bank here on these. Um, we've tested adversarial uh, robustness as well, and we, we don't see much of a change here. So I guess adversarial examples are still um, an open topic <laughs> to be solved. Thanks. Uh, Over there, yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting. So uh, when you talk about the stylized image net, so you're just saying that uh, use the random textures. Uh, but I think uh, how you're going to sterilize the images can affect your results pretty much. So just random is OK, or you have some failures on this uh, stylized image net, or, or do you have any, any more comments on this uh, method? So um, I guess it would be interesting to explore whether certain kinds of stel uh, stylization work better than others. Right. Uh, here, we, we really thought that Simply, a random texture would make sense because we, we just want to remove the original texture and just destroy it, basically, to, to get rid of it, to force the network to learn something else. Um, but yeah, could be uh, definitely worth exploring. Yeah. Thank you. In the center. Thank you for the talk. Um, is it possible that the texture bias arises only in the object detection task or uh, classification task and not in other tasks? So it's, it's possibly task dependent? Um, that's something we, we haven't explored. We have um, data for ImageNet object recognition and also for open images, which is a different training data set also for object recognition. And we find the same texture bias in, in these uh, settings. I think. Um, it really seems that texture is the easiest strategy. So whenever there's a task where the texture is sort of a shortcut to, to solve the problem, 
my best uh, guess would be that the network actually learns texture uh, before it learns any other higher level uh, properties of the task. Thank you. Okay. Uh, DJ. Uh, thanks for a very interesting talk. Um, so I was wondering if rather than replacing the texture randomly, if you replaced it adversarially, uh, would that make a difference to the results and would that improve performance? Um, what do you mean by adversarial so, replacement so, of so texture? If you have some kind of parameterization of textures and you could search through the space of texture replacements, could you adversarially choose the one that most confuses the classifier and then kind of train to be robust against an adversarial replacement of the texture? Okay, yeah, um, interesting question. We, we haven't explored that. Um, I think it would, would be possible in principle, um, yeah. We've just used uh, random textures so far. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, did you try to train the network with uh, natural distortions? And if yes, what was the result? Mm -hmm. Actually, we've uh, tried that in earlier work where um, we thought, okay, how can we achieve robustness towards uh, natural distortions? And a key finding here was that when we train on even like eight different types of distortions simultaneously. The network gets very uh, good on these eight types, but it fails to generalize to uh, a novel ninth type of distortion. So this generalization failure is really something that cannot be solved with just augmenting the training data with like, lots of different types of, of noise. And this is also uh, why I'm super excited about um, this here, that the shape bias actually seems to be something that helps even though um, distortions weren't part of the training data. The, um, the robustness still generalizes to novel distortions, and, and this seems to be an inherent property of a shape bias that um, does not appear when, when simply augmenting the training data with noise. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the talk, it was really interesting. Um, do you have any thoughts on how to get more shape bias? Because I noticed there's still not the same level of shape bias as humans have, which might be desirable. Um, excellent question, yeah. There's still a bit of a gap between um, human shape bias and uh, network shape bias at the moment. Um, I think so far we've just explored different um, training data, but actually architectural modifications could push a, ne a network towards a shape bias. So this is something that um, could help in the future. Um, as well as changes of the loss function. So far, we've really just explored the training data, but there are different knobs to tweak. And I'd be very curious to find out which um, would be the, the last missing bit to, towards human shape bias. And last one. Uh, when you were comparing the two ResNet 50 models, were they trained on the same number of examples and for the same number of iterations? Mm -hmm. So um, the standard one uh, trained on ImageNet was just a pre-trained model from, from PyTorch, and the um, uh, model with a shape bias was then trained on stylized ImageNet um, using ImageNet pre-training. But then during training on stylized ImageNet with exactly the same number of uh, epochs as the, the ImageNet network. Okay, thank you. Let's thank the speaker one more time. And uh, that concludes our session. Um, there's a coffee break right now. We've run a couple of minutes over into it, and uh, posters start at 4.30. Uh, thanks very much. <laughs>